Mr. Ganesh Sundaram Subramaniam earned a master degree in physiotherapy on advanced orthopedic and traumatology from the Tamil Nadu DRMGR Medical University, Chennai, India. His interest in the fitness sector prompted him to extend his education by taking a year-long course in fitness management and earning an MBA in hospital management. He previously worked as a clinical physiotherapist in a number of hospitals. He began work as a lecturer in physiotherapy at UniKL RCMP in 2010. He is a member of Malaysian Physiotherapy Association. He is certified in MVLA Spine Manipulation, awarded by the Palms College of Osteopathic Medicine, Osaka, Japan. His research interests include manual therapy and cortical pain mechanism. Without further ado, please welcome Mr. Ganesh. The platform is yours. Thank you, Mr. Saiful. Thank you for your kind words. Is my voice audible? Yes, yes, Mr. Ganesh. So you can see my screen? Yes, Mr. Ganesh. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Mr. Saipal, for your kind introduction and welcome you all for this wonderful afternoon in the international webinar organized by University Technology Bana. Today, my topic will be orthopedic in geriatrics. So I hope this session won't be a boring one. So I try make it interesting. What are the objectives? So geriatrics has various definitions. So we don't have any specific definition for geriatrics. And what are the commonly neglected problems in geriatrics? And orthopedic in geriatric, that's my topic. And here we have few subdivisions that is false, degenerative joint disease and pain. What actually is geriatric? So geriatric is a branch of healthcare that focus on our unique needs as we age and age group that is difficult to define precisely. Orthogeriatrics is defined as the care of elderly orthopedic patients, most often following a fractured hip. So it is more towards the inpatient uh, therapy. The term older is preferred over elderly, but both are ambiguous. More than 65 is the most commonly used age, normally we say. Yet, most patients do not require geriatric competence in their treatment until they are 70, 75, or even 80. So, it doesn't mean a person is above 65, so he needs a geriatric treatment. So, it depends upon the age. After 65, it can be at 70, or sometimes it may occur at the age of 75, or after the age of 80. So, it depends from person to person. What actually is geriatric orthopedics? Geriatric orthopedics, it's not something new to us. It's the same term of orthopedics. The field of orthopedics aim to promote a health by preventing and treating diseases and disabilities associated with the musculoskeletal system. Within this framework, the impairments that physiotherapists often address are related to mobility and function. So as a role of the therapist, our focus is more towards the mobility of our patient and function of our patient. Musculoskeletal changes associated with aging include decreased muscle mass and strength. So obviously when the age increases, automatically the muscle mass decreases, the strength decreases, decrease in bone density and loss of skeletal height, joint pain, stiffness, increased structure risk, alterations in gait balance and posture. So we have a lot to work on in geriatric orthopedics. If you see the commonly neglected problems, I have few, that is six. One is on fall. The second one is degenerative joint disease that comes with a red flag sign. What actually is a red flag sign? Red flag sign is something to refer with the pathology of the diseases. So if a disease refers with a pathology, so the condition comes under a red flag sign. Pain 
it comes under an yellow flux sign. So when we categorize, we categorize pain as yellow flux sign. Depression and memory concern that comes in orange flux sign, urinary incontinence and polypharmacy. Polypharmacy is something a geriatric patient, he or she consuming more than five medicines for different uh, reasons for our different problems they have that is called as polypharmacy. So here my topic, my focus will be more towards the fall, degenerative joint disease and pain, this three. Let us see the general thing with the systems. So particularly we know we have a lot of systems in our body. So as our topic is focused towards the musculoskeletal system, so we see what is the difference in a general as well as the musculoskeletal system. The first one is weight loss or weight gain, fatigue, weakness, fever, chill, loss of appetite, snore, night sweat, swollen lymph node and pain. Sometimes this point comes in our mind, why this weight loss is a troublesome? So for example, we know weight loss for a person in a month that is roughly around two to three and a half kgs is a good weight loss that is considered to be a good weight loss. In the same thing, if my patient is losing a weight three kgs in a week, that is not something good. If a person is losing weight in a week, three kgs or three and a half kgs in a week, meaning something we have to think about the tumor. Even all the tumors, I won't say yes, few are yes, few are no. Now we will be in confusing. Why you are saying yes, sometimes you are saying no. Let me tell you. I take two examples of a tumor. So for example, I take the tumor in the lung, okay. If my patient is having a lung tumor, automatically the increase in production of cytokine will decrease the muscle mass. So automatically the person will lose weight. So that is the reason it starts in the earlier stage. If I take an another patient, patient B, if she is having an ovarian cancer, it doesn't mean she will lose weight in the initial stage of cancer. Until the cancer cell grow, it will not show. The symptoms will not be there. So she will be showing the symptoms after a year, after two years, she will be showing some heavier weight loss. Weight loss. So we have certain cancers in the initial stage of weight loss. We have certain case, cancers in the later stages. Let us come into the musculoskeletal. In musculoskeletal, we have something with falls, fear of falling, even that is considered as a fall, neck pain, so it can be neck pain, back pain, any joint pain, or a painful gait, so when they find difficulty in walking, a bone disorder, a muscle pain, and stiffness. And here I have mentioned something, increase in ALP and increase in AST. What is this ALP? So ALP refers to alkaline phosphatase and AST refers to aspartame phosphatase transmittase. So what is the difference in this ALP and AST specifically is if ALP is increasing in a liver function test, it is directly related with a bone disorder. If AST is increasing, it is directly related with a muscle pain. It is not something that we should neglect that this is not my area. So certain things we have to show some interest. Okay, there is some relationship between a liver function test. If there is some variation of these enzymes that has a role with bone disorder and muscle pain. So how we can interrelate the musculoskeletal system with our lab investigation. The first one is fall and an anticipated incident. So which is not expected in which the individual fall to the ground floor to the low, lower level. Falls and poor bone health are major causes of disability and unintentional death among the elderly. A considerably body of evidence clearly reveals that individualized physical exercise programs are highly beneficial in lowering the risk and rate of falls in older persons. So that is aged 65 and F. So what are the causes of falls? So we have various causes, uh, muscle weakness, poor balance, visual impairment, polypharmacy and environmental hazards. So that is something to talk about our home environment or the environment in the hospital, whatever it is, that is hazardous to the patient. So here's something called model for improvement. So I can say there are two perspectives. One is the patient's perspective, the other one is therapist's perspective. So being a therapist, what I try to accomplish. So how we know that the change is going to create an improvement for my patient. 
what changes can we make that will result in an improvement so i will plan i will work i study i act what is something on the right side that is called as eyes so eyes is something from the patient side so what is my patient idea and what is his concern and what he expects so what is your expectation that is e is expectation so for example i am a lorry driver so i have a back pain so my idea is i want to get rid of this pain so what is my concern i want to take care of my family so i have to drive so being a therapist you should not say you should not drive so that is my concern what is expectation i want you to clear my problem as early as possible that is my expectation so this is from the patient's perspective that is called as eyes which we can include in our assessment so i am not going too detail into this just this is for our idea something called as f a r a t frat that is false risk assessment tool that concern recent fall it include medication the psychological and cognitive status so everything have a score and we score this one so we have some checklist here so the checklist follows the clinical frailty scale as per the dalhousie university so you can go through the google and you can find what actually is clinical frailty scale frailty is something the person is fragile so if it is an object we say fragile if a person is weak we say it is called as frailty so it carries from very fit to terminally ill so that is something a smart objective that we can implement in our assessment that is specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound for example i have my patient so my patient say i need to get more exercise yes good that's welcome you are very specific you want to do exercise measurable i can find out a place where i have a walking path or trails in my area yes that is measurable if it is there you can go to the park achievable i want to do the exercise in morning 8 am or 5 pm yes that's possible from the patient it is up to you whether you want to do exercise at 8 am or you want to do exercise at 5 pm it is up to you relevant yes i can exercise as long as the weather is good it is understood if the weather is good my patient is going to do if the weather is not good maybe he skip exercise for a day time bound i will walk four days in a week so that one you can fix by yourself i can walk three days in a month four days in a month so this is something called as smart objective what actually is periodic geriatric assessment so this one is we can do a complete health assessment at the age of 50 so we cross at the age of 55 60 or 65 we can do 5 years one if you are above 65 we can do 2 years ones it is up to the patient it depends upon uh, because it mostly deals with the money so it depends upon the financial status of the person also this one is just an idea how prevention is better than cure so if you see a simple chart i will explain only one thing that is the pathophysiology goes to impairment impairment goes to functional limitation because of functional limitation it results in disability so it comes vice versa it goes in right the same chart follows back so the physiology impairment functional limitation and disability what is a comprehensive geriatric assessment so with assessment you see you can see the lot of things are there some assessment and we have a multidisciplinary team so we have different people involved here so our role as a physio is the functional ability so the nutritional ability will be taken care by the nurse or nutritionist so the medical assessment will be taken care by the doctor so the multidisciplinary team is responsible for assessment for the problem finding personalized plan intervention what treatment you want to do for your patient and how you do a planned view for your patient in malaysia if you see in 2010 it is age 65 plus years is 5% and 2040 it is expected to be 14.5% so it increasing high so this one we should use as an opportunity you, you, you could not say that no this is uh, very difficult for me i cannot handle a geriatric patient i am comfortable in working with the younger population no physiotherapists are a valuable members of a multidisciplinary team who contribute to specialist patient assessment health promotion triage evaluation and treatment activity Uh, so let me not get too detail into triage so these are the few things how we form a community rehab so community rehab we have physio occupational therapist district nurse matrons gp dietitian podiatrists and social workers and you can see we have specialized evidence based programs we can come up with we can develop health and well being programs we can come up with local leisure programs we can come up with community exercise program 
And if my patient is having some multiple morbidity, that is more than a case. For example, my patient is diabetic as well as a cancer. So something is comorbid. So another condition is joining with them. So we can be a little bit focused and we can be in broad spectrum. We can think about the assessment or the treatment plan in a broad spectrum, not focusing on one particular exercise. So geriatric interdisciplinary team, their role is to mainly on health promotion and prevention, chronic disease management, end of life care, that is something called as palliative care. If it is cancer, for sure we know we cannot, it's not curable, right? So dementia care. And this thing we need to talk about, something is very interesting, that is FICA, that is a spiritual history tool you can always deal with. And that's some because mostly the people are spiritual, so we can discuss with them how the spirituality helped them to get rid of their problems or with the pains or something that can be included for an geriatric assessment and the relationship between sexuality and intimacy. Sexuality is not about the physical relationship. It is about the intimacy. It is about the touch. It is about the hug. So we have a lot. So not think only about a physical relationship. This thing we can deal or we can talk with our patient in a geriatric assessment. We do have certain specific uh, Golombok Rust Inventory of set Sexual Satisfaction Scores Scale. It is a validated tool we can use for our assessment. This is for our uh, idea. Can exercise prevent fall? Why not? So there is now a substantial evidence that fall in the senior population can be avoided by adapting a well-developed and targeted physiotherapy programs provided as group exercise or individually tailored physiotherapy program. So false intervention program can differ widely from one another. Some one form of exercise with goal of addressing one issue in, instead of balance. You can focus on balance. You can fo focus on gait speed. You can focus on strength. So you can come with multiple factors. PNF, it is something good from our part. This is a rehabilitation technique used to stimulate the neuromuscular system in an effort to excite the proprioceptors in order to produce a desired movement. So PNF is something good. So we can teach sit to stand exercise to prevent fall. We can teach them balance exercise by taking a support. We can teach them toe to stand exercise with a support. We can teach them knee curl exercise if they are comfortable in prone lying. Otherwise we change, we just modify the knee curl in different form. We have community group exercise. So I would say as an indoor, and as an outdoor platform, we can develop our own community group exercise. We can develop individual exercise regime from indoor as well as outdoor. So it can be for one person at a time, they can do exercise. Virtual shadowing is something, it is getting trend. So we have both pros and cons in when we do online. So, so you know very well about the pros and cons, how, how it is advantages, how it is disadvantages. I would like to say only one disadvantage, the major disadvantage is we cannot find the red flag sign. So unless we touch, we cannot differentiate the tenderness. I consult my patient through a video call. I cannot touch, I cannot feel the tenderness. So few things are there. And let's see a small. You can hear the sound. Yes, yes, Mr. Ganesh, yes. Okay. Innovative technologies help support and empower elderly citizens both in nursing homes and in their own home. One example is the nursing home of the future, which is located in Aalborg in northern Denmark. Even though we're at a nursing home, citizens have their own apartment and their own furniture and decorations. New assisted living technology is integrated to provide empowerment and independence. A ceiling hoist system can be used to move frail citizens and the ceiling rails are easy to use without taking up floor space. Elegantly designed and flexible solutions are used in the bathroom to allow independent bathroom visits. The automatic patient turning system provides more safety dignity, independence, and comfort for the citizen, while saving nursing resources and avoiding heavy lifts for the nurses. A nurse can manage a large number of home care visits with support from the mobile nursing EHR that also help optimize the route between visits.
detection of frailty or deteriorating conditions are key elements in reducing hospital admittance and keeping elderly citizens healthy. Innovative technology is used to monitor the risk and status for thousands of elderly citizens in order to react immediately when changes occur. A comprehensive dashboard indicates the care status and provides information about the latest changes and care plans for the individual citizen. of innovative technology helps free up time for more personal contact with the elderly. Immediate and compliant rehabilitation is important to fully recover from an accident or operation. Virtual rehabilitation solutions enable citizens to do their exercises independently while the system guide and follow up on correct and compliant training. This is possible because the solutions use sensors to monitor and register exercises. A larger elderly population will increase the number of citizens who live with dementia. To cope with this challenge, Denmark has decided to become a dementia-friendly nation where dementia patients should live safely and with dignity. The effort to improve the care for frail elderly patients and keep them healthy and independent relies on integrated care and new ways of cooperating across the care continuum. This elderly patient who is suffering from a stroke is using new technology. After den sygdom, der har jeg sat det tale, og jeg har sat det holdt balancen, og det er min ender, det ryster. Så jeg kan ikke se ved hunden mere. Da vi så fik det nye appet der, der var min verden reds. På først skulle jeg have personal til at skrive alt ned for mig. Det skal ikke med i dag, for jeg kan bare bruge en ting, og så kan jeg jo kun ikke kæmpe om verden. Det er godt værd. The Danish tradition for public-private cooperation is contributing to bringing new innovation faster from research to daily use. Living labs are used to test new solutions by both professionals and elderly users. Living labs provide the necessary evidence and usability test of new innovations on which decisions for large-scale implementations can be made. Denmark is a front-runner and the concept is now being exported to a number of other countries. Using assistive living technology is really a win-win situation. The elderly become more independent and therefore don't ask for the same amount of help. Quality of life and cost effectiveness go hand in hand. Technology frees up time and improves the working environment in many ways. So did you have to join this? Is is osteoarthritis is a common wear and tear disease that occurs when the cartilage that serves as a cushion in the joint deteriorates, so getting worse. This condition can affect any joint. It can be in knee, it can be in hand, hips, or spine. So the background, the adult age 65 and above with the degenerative joint disease. This condition is associated with pain, loss of function, reduced endurance, ultimately leading to weight gain and associated complications. The underlying cause of this condition is typically chronic repetitive motion that results in inflammation and structural joint damage. So what are the common signs and symptoms? It's pain, stiffness, tenderness, loss of flexibility, bone spurs and swelling. So here we have a few functional movement with key muscles. So bed mobility, we have certain muscle for transfer and squats. They can concentrate on particular ambulation and stair climbing flow transfers, fast gait and jumping. So we can be specific in training these particular muscles to improve the functional movement. Stretching, we all know it increases the flexibility, it increases range of motion, it improves your performance in physical activities, it increases blood flow to your muscles, it keeps your posture good. So we can teach them a few exercises, hamstring stretch, a calf stretch, 
and SLR, I'm sorry, this one is too high. SLR should be a little bit low. I didn't get a perfect picture for SLR and for quadriceps set. This is for strengthening your quadriceps muscle. And for spine, we have single leg bridge without arms. And we can do the bridge progression single leg using the dynamic surface ball with the arm support. So we use the medicine ball. Aquatic therapy is something with maybe warm water, the viscosity of water, reduction of gravitational forces, buoyancy uh, that improves the patient's moral. At the same time, therapist should be by the side of the patient to take care of the patient. Otherwise, they slip and fall off. Pain, something an interesting topic. Pain is an unpleasant sensory or emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage. So we can categorize pain into acute pain, chronic pain, or subacute pain. Acute pain is the most common type of pain, usually associated with common illness or injuries like cuts and sprains. If your pain, if your pain lasts more than three months, it is considered as chronic or it is persisting pain. Uh, I think someone has taken, cannot move what, the slide. Uh, what happened? Uh, no, no, Rakila has no over the control. Yeah, you just, you just close that. Uh, just close that one. Okay. All right. Still it's stuck. It's just uh, so better you stop present first and then you can go back. Okay. Yep. You can see now? Yes, Mr. Ganesh. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Sorry for the inconvenience. Acute pain is the most common type of pain, usually associated with common illness or injuries like cuts and sprains. If your pain lasts more than three months, it is considered as chronic or persistent pain. So we have different types of pain. We know what are the categories. So how the pain travels? Let me make it very simple. So here with the pain starts, it goes through the A delta and C fiber, taken through the primary neuron. It goes to the substantia gelatinosa of our spinal cord, cross section of spinal cord. From here, the information is taken to the secondary neuron. It goes to thalamus from, through the secondary neuron. From here, the information takes to the area of the brain where we feel the pain with the help of tertiary neuron. So we do physiotherapy here. We start with, for example, we start with some massage here, stimulating with the Parsinian corpuscle, and we have dorsum, column, columnar, medial, lemniscal pathway. BCML to substantia gelatinosa, where we are going to block the pain at the level of medulla. So this is a pain modulation in substantia gelatinosa. So you know all well about the A delta C fiber goes with glutamate and substance P transfer with the help of secondary neuron, the gate is open. What actually gate is open? I feel pain, that is gate is open. DCML with inhibitory neuron with the help of encephalin, the gate is closed. What is gate is closed? I don't feel any pain. So let me show you a simple video here. So this is the hand. I'm going to tap with a hammer. So we create pain. So we tap, it's tap. So you can see the red dots moving down to the target cells. Then it is going to thalamus. So we are going to start with the therapy mechanoreceptor. So you can see one, the green dots move, the red dots will stop. So meaning the information is not conveyed to brain. So it's understood that we don't, we feel that I don't have pain because we are blocking this. I just for a second, I play this again for the nociceptor fibers, click pain, the red dots move from target cells to thalamus, red dots running down fast to thalamus, going to brain, start with the green. Now you can see there is no red dots here. So no more pain feeling here. Okay, so this is a bit from my previous proposal for my PRGS. So you can see a uh, neuroimaging studies have revealed numerous structural and functional changes with the brain of people with chronic musculoskeletal pain. 
In Malaysia, the prevalence of low back pain varied between 10 to 63 percent with a median of 37 percent in several studies and it did not differ by sex in most of them. This is the point I added the slide here. Gray matter volume is decreased in patients with chronic low back pain in the area of bilateral dorsolateral prefrontal cortex and right thalamus equivalent to gray matter loss in 10 to 20 years of aging. It doesn't mean a person who is Alzheimer, it is because of their family condition, it is because of their neurological condition, they get Alzheimer's. There are also reasons a person who is suffering from any sort of musculoskeletal pain for a period of months or year, there are chances for getting reduced the gray matter volume in brain so they may or they are prone to Alzheimer's disease. So we need to take care of pain. So a simple case study. Madam K, a 59 year old woman arrives at the clinic with a three day history of increasingly worsening pain and swelling in her left knee. She denies any injury, fever or other ailment. She has never felt this kind of discomfort before and she claims to be pretty active. So it comes to my mind whether to go with an x-ray or not to go with an x-ray. Normally this confusion comes when we have a patient when they walk in, they tell about their, their, their condition, we may get a doubt to proceed with the x-ray or not. So how it is followed in Europe, how they follow this, that is something called as Ottawa knee rule. Ottawa, we know it is from Canada. What actually is Ottawa knee rule? So what actually the rule says is, for example, when the patient comes to me, if the patient is above 55 years, I can go for an x-ray, number one. Number two, if the patient have isolated patellar tenderness, meaning pain comes only in patellar, I can go for an x-ray. If my patient is having isolated tenderness, in neck of fibula because where comes your common peroneal nerve i can go for an x-ray if there is a pain so we know that so we know that can be seen in the x-ray but still if there is isolated tenderness in fibula we can go for an x-ray i ask my patient to bend the knee to 95 degree if my patient cannot bend 95 degree i can go for an x-ray number five i ask my patient to take few steps let's say four or five that four or five steps without any limb. The patient should not limp. So if the patient limp, then I can go for an x-ray. So th this is how they come with everything. There is something called as very interesting one that is C-spine rule, Ottawa ankle rule, Ottawa knee rule. Why they come with all these rules is if we follow these things, if we follow these protocols, Unnecessarily, we don't waste money in taking an imaging. So that is the possibility. And there is a study that they have reduced a lot. They reduced a lot of money wasted in the imaging techniques. If you experience a pain or discomfort lasting longer than a day, please seek assistance from a healthcare professional, not from Google. Welcome for your chewing. Thank you, Mr. Ganesh, for very interesting uh, sharing session. Uh, so now we go to the Q&A session. Um, so far, there's no question on the chat box. So I would like to ask anyone from the participant, if you have any question, you can speak up. Okay, Mr. Okay, Nick, there's no okay, question for you. For you. Then, but I, I have a question for you, Mr. Ganesh. Yes. <laughs> okay, Mr. Ganesh. Um, in J3, okay, uh, there is a lot of also they have a lot of case of like a chronic pain. Okay. So how in J3 they try how they solve that kind of problem of uh, chronic pain management? For example, how they manage it in a J3. Okay, so when it comes for pain, the first the patient comes to us only for pain. If there is no pain, they never turn up. So there is a pain. So the patient comes to me for a chronic pain. 
and we have a clear picture the chronic pain is something more than few months maybe three months or six months or something along with a pain management along with the pain management there is something we can apply called as behavioral therapy so where we can discuss we can teach them our lifestyle modification sometimes uh, we see even in our own family members our grandparents or somebody we advise them sometimes they won't listen even though they are our family member they say it's okay it's okay i don't even though we say i am your grandson i am a physiotherapist i can teach you the exercise they say it's, it's okay it's okay i can follow the exercise some hesitance will be there something called as a behavioral therapy or sometimes we can go with a group therapy so we are we have patients of similar kind i have patients of similar kind of patients i can teach them exercise i can make them participate so they will be they will feel more interesting they will get participate into so instead of forcing them we can find some alternative called as behavioral therapy or group therapy for treating this chronic pain okay thank you mr okay. ganesh uh, and I would... uh, we also have another question from uh, mohammad ikbal saharuddin say so the question is what is the update on your sensor development in detecting back pain okay actually my idea is normally we have a visual analog scale we have different types of scale for finding the pain so my idea is to take from brain that is my eeg study so eeg i want to work particularly on that delta wave that figures out the pain and i go with the erector spinae muscle that is emg study so I have to work on these two factors and do this one. So when I apply this uh, PRGS before, my team doesn't have an engineer. So that's the reason it got rejected. To be honest, it is rejected because they say your team doesn't have an engineer in there because all are medical professionals in your team. So I need to work with some engineering faculty. <laughs> okay.